Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the show. And as you can see, I don't have my cable. I don't have my cable hooked up. <laughs> oh, I got lost a TV guide cover. Yeah, I I had to dig out one of my uh, favorite TV guides, and uh, so that's what we're talking about tonight. We're going to be talking about old school TV, folks. <laughs> old school when you used to get that once a week. TV guide and you go through there finding out what's going to be on this week on your favorite show and you get a little well you get like a sentence and it would tell you what's going to be on the show it was so exciting it was like the biggest moment of our lives now <laughs> that was before binge watching you used to have to hunt for stuff but before we get to that we will get to the news ladies and gentlemen and now comedy chords and chaos news <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's when you know you got a serious show. We would probably, we'd probably be, if TV Guide was around today, we'd probably be on the cover. Anyways, let's dive right in here. Uh, since we're talking about, uh, well, we're not talking about it. Since everyone's talking about Remembrance Day, because it's around the corner tomorrow, French hiker finds century old pigeon message found, or sorry, message from World War I. So a pigeon message. So we're talking about old things like TV guide. And before the show, we were talking about old cell phones. Well, let's go back a little further. Let's talk about pigeons. Pigeons used to deliver messages and they found the message. It was in a little cylinder that they used to attach to the pigeon and the pigeon would go. But I guess the pigeon could have got shot down. You know, who knows, right? <laughs> Interrupted. Yeah. Just lost in the space. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. You hear about you hear about all. Of, uh, how did you send that message by a pigeon? What was it? Car they called them carrier pigeons because they carry carried messages. Yeah. So yeah, believe it or not, kids, if you're watching, going really, they had stuff before. Yeah, telegrams and all that stuff existed, folks. Ah, cruise ships are sailing again, but without passengers, folks. So I don't know what the deal is here, but. I was thinking about this with planes. You know, all these planes are just sitting on runways right now. And you know what happens when things just sit around that don't run? They get gunky and, and fall apart. Well, these ships, I guess they want to keep them moving. At least they're running, right? But it must cost a lot of money to move a ship. I guess, though, they if you want to move them to certain areas or put them back somewhere, or if you're paying a hell of a lot of money to dock that thing, so yeah, you can. Uh, they they're sailing again. Do cruise ships sail? They cruise, don't they? So this article, this is really odd. This article: cruise ships are allowed to sail. Yeah, like you can go to you can go to the store because they have something on sale. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's. That. <laughs> Oh, ah, this is good. So since, uh, since they're uh, coming up with, uh, the new drugs, they're also coming up with new names for drugs, coronavirus drugs. Uh, people really can't get over the name of the newly approved coronavirus drug. And the name is, and you know what? I don't have it on the screen here. It is a Frickin', well, you're going to find it on the next screen. But the name of this thing, I'm going to tell you what it is. It's ble I'm going to try to say it because I've read it a few times already. Blamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamalamal
<laughs> well, Black Betty, Black Betty might have COVID. That's maybe the first person was Black Betty to get COVID. Or David Lee Roth has it. Maybe they both have COVID and that's how they came up with that name. But anyways, it's abso- absolutely insane how they would came. There. Nobody's got COVID. So in Taiwan, more pets than children in Taiwan. This is amazing. The birth rate has dropped. Well, maybe the birth rate hasn't dropped. Maybe just people are getting more pets. You know, they, it could be that. I, I, uh, I was thinking about this and we have four dogs and there's two of us in the house. So technically in our house, there's way more pets than humans. Though I guess it's questionable. These dogs are like humans the way they're treated. I, I, I get a kick out of this. We have to bring it up tonight. If you look at the bottom of this post, I didn't crop that out. I left it in there. Biden 290, Trump 214. So congratulations to uh, Joe Biden and the soon-to-be president, Camila Harris. Well, she's going to be president. That's what I mean soon. He's, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to last. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder how that works. Joe, where am I? You're in the White House. What? 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 Well, how did I get here? Yeah. So that, that, that it should be interesting to see how that all plays out. But he's already got a couple of dogs. He, they adopted two dogs. So I guess maybe they're taking after Taiwan. They figure they should have more pets than. Yeah, maybe. But speaking of pets in the White House, uh, Kentucky elects a town in Kentucky. Tucky elects dog as mayor and he's all ears. Yeah. The dog, uh, the, the town is that this is the town. The dog is a mayor of a town named rabbit hash rabbit hash. That's the town. I think everybody is smoking hash in rabbit town. So we got to get it now. Do you know do you, what, what kind of dog do you think? The mayor would be if 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 a dog was a mayor, what kind of dog would he be? Can you guess? A big dog? You going with a big dog? Okay, let's, let's see. I got a I got a picture of the mayor of this town of uh, Rabbit Hash, and here he is, folks. This is Wilbur. His name is Wilbur Wilbur Beast. <laughs> Wilbur Beast, the French bulldog, was elected mayor of Rabbit Hash. Yeah. Um. And it was the highest winning total ever for the position. He had 13,000 votes. He won the 13,000. Yeah, look at that. He's all ready to go. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if he's a Democrat or a Republican. Didn't say. Yeah, that's that's great. If my dog's... What? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, <laughs> I kind of like the hat and the bow, but this dog, yeah, this dog, uh, it's in there. Good for him. Good for him. We need change. So we got the first, we got the first uh, female uh, vice president and the first dog mayor of uh, of Rabbit Hash. Well done. Oh boy. Keeping it in the U.S. here. Wisconsin trooper stops driver hauling snowmobile atop sedan. Now, but I was thinking, you know, Alberta just got a ton of snow. You imagine your car gets snowed in up to the roof and you're the guy who did this. You're at the police station right now. They've, they've taken your car in. You're sitting there. You're in the cell. You wake up in the morning. You got six feet of snow. Who's laughing now? You don't know. You don't know what. Maybe they're looking ahead. We never thought we were, we never thought we were going to have a lockdown pandemic and look where we're at now. We need not every who's got have you got some blamma flamma damma dam at home in the cupboard? No one's got the drugs. No one's got the drugs. Uh this is good too cuz this these are this is good. A woman poses as an FBI agent to fetch free chicken filla. Now is it chicken fill Fillet, chicken Chick Fil A. 
why can't I, why did I have to get that all wrong? Uh, the cop said this. So she apparently went in there and said she was with the FBI and she uh, needed some chicken. But you know, what, what is more exciting about this at article that I put up here is what's on the bottom, the odds and ends section. It says chicken nuggets, cures, and and other offbeat offerings. So there's actually cures out there for chicken nuggets. So if you think you can cure shit with chicken nuggets, I'm thinking that's great. What the only thing I can think of is hunger right now. <laughs> Maybe that's what they mean. That's what you're going to get. What? I go check this out. But but maybe but maybe she went in there uh, and she goes, no, maybe she said, excuse me. No, maybe she said, excuse me. I'm with the FBI and we've heard that there's been some stuff that's been your your chicken has been laced and they've sent they've sent me here to test it. And it, and it looks like she's really hoping it's laced with meth. <laughs> I heard there's meth in there and I need to come and test it. Yeah, geez. And to finish things off, if you have your Chick-fil-A, you need something to wash it down with, what better to wash it down with than a glass of Tesla tequila? Tesla launches $250 bottles of tequila and runs out in hours now when it said ran out i was thinking like battery runs out i'm thinking like can it doesn't work anymore you, can you drive this bottle of tequila around in your car i don't know but yeah I, these guys you know what that freaking elon musk was probably sitting around one night having a few drinks and joking and said i bet you if we make 250 bottles of tequila, we'll sell out in hours. And they're like, whatever. Guy made, remember the flamethrowers? And they were just, they weren't, they all they were was butane torches with a trigger. But he sold out of those too. That's it. Yeah, Tesla tequila. That, I wonder, yeah, that's, um. anyways, I'm not the tequila drinker, so... That's the news, ladies and gentlemen. News. And tonight, we are Timless. 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 Tim, <laughs> Tim, Tim. Sounds now, funny. listen, I, Tim had to go to the hospital today. Yes, I don't did. know if Tim wanted us to talk about this on the air, but he's not here. If he was here, we wouldn't talk about it. But, you know, <laughs> hey, it's our little living room. I'm in the living room here, so we're just having a chat. Yeah. But Tim had Tim was in to get some... some uh, a little bit of uh what do they call it procedure something procedure. and then i thought you know what was he doing yet was he you know having the timbits adjusted or <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was <laughs> yeah i don't know only tim knows <sighs> so oh so we we don't know why tim was in there we hope everything is he wouldn't tell us but everything so. he said everything was good <laughs> everything and, was uh... good He'll be back with a vengeance next week, apparently. Me, I so. got it. Uh, if he comes back and his voice is a little higher, <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you don't. Brother. I don't think you have. I, I don't know. I think the surgery is still this. They just do a little nip and tuck, don't they? If they do that, but I don't know. He, I'm hoping he had that done a long time ago. Oh, you don't brother. take any chances these days, you know. Uh, yeah. Who so knows so we days. wish. Tim, Tim is good. He has messaged us, though we haven't talked yeah. to him, but he is. Oh good. yeah, so he's we're, good. We're monitoring he's good. him. He's good. Yeah. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he just wanted a night off. Maybe he had to. Maybe, come up. maybe, maybe he had to, yeah. Maybe maybe, it's all maybe, maybe not. Maybe uh, I, I'm feeling a little tired. Maybe I need that enough. Not enough. So his wife said, "Tell him yet having an organ taken out or something." He's he's drinking that two hundred fifty dollar tequila right now. Yeah. Is what he's, doing. <laughs> he's having. A, <laughs> he's, he, he got a bottle. We're uh, on to you. Yeah. Oh my God. Maybe that's why he's in there. Okay. So oh, yeah. Boy. So that's it. So um, tonight we are gonna. Take a little trip back. Yes. What was that? <laughs> was that supposed to be there? It sounded like it was. It sounded like a clip from a porn or something. <laughs> Mark, put the porn away. Jesus oh, Christ. brother, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about. We're going to just ramble on about TV guide stuff. So, if you're watching and you have a favorite show from uh, back in the 
I guess we didn't even we didn't even do our history or our research on this because I'm trying to figure out when did the when did the TV guide come out? It was a long time ago. TV guide, first TV guide. I don't know. Let me ask my friend Google. <laughs> well, maybe maybe before we do the maybe before we <laughs> dive into this, maybe we should do this week of music. Maybe well, we, we should keep. We, maybe we. Tim's not here to keep us organized. Tim, we really miss you. Yeah, that the whole thing's gone to pot already. All right. Let's do some this this week in music. Week in music. Before we get into some old TV stuff. All right, let's see what we got cooking here this week. Now, uh, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, 1997 on November 4th, Shania Twain released her third solo album, her third studio album, sorry, uh, Come On Over, which became the best-selling country music al- album by a female act. The album has sold more than 40 million copies worldwide with over 20 million in the U.S. alone. Uh, The U.K., 3.3 million. And out of the 16 tracks on the album, 12 were released as singles. 12 singles from one record. That's crazy. That is nuts. That's a lot. Holy crap. Usually you get, you know, a handful of two, three, four singles. 12 singles. Uh, November 5th, 2005. Uh, guitarist Link Ray died at, at the age of 76. Now, Ray was credited with inventing the fuzz guitar after punching a hole in a speaker, giving him a distorted guitar sound. The old rip speaker trick. I did that way back oh, in the day. Oh, <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought you were going to say, like, he, he glued, like, fur on it. No, not that kind of fuzz. Like the dashboards in the 70s when you were working at ATV Guide. <laughs> He um he was famous for his 1958 US number 16 single Rumble which was banned on several radio stations on the grounds that it glorified juvenile delinquency which is a rare feat because the song was an instrumental I don't know don't ask me Now let's see here oh <laughs> November 6 1975 the Sex Pistols made their live debut at St. Martin's School of Art in central London, supporting a band called Bazooka Joe. Who remembers Bazooka Joe? Bazooka Joe. Bazooka I, Joe. I know the name, but... Um, that was a band, uh, Adam Ant came from that band and went on to big big stardom. There we go. Poppy. I was trying to get my poppy, but I, I can't <laughs> get it. Anyway, the Pistols' performance lasted only 15 minutes, playing only five songs. Those who remembered the show don't know who pulled the plug on the band, but they do remember that the band was not very tight and incredibly loud. That is one big poppy. There you go. Perfect. There we go. There you go. Perfect. Now we match. Uh, November 7, 2014. Bruce Springsteen started off the annual Stand Up for Heroes event by playing an acoustic set. Then he offered the, his guitar, his acoustic guitar, to the highest bidder. When bidding reached $60,000, he threw in a guitar lesson. Not bad. That's pretty cool. Someone then offered him $250,000. So at that point, he offered a lasagna dinner at his house, a ride around the block in the sidecar of his motorcycle, and the shirt off his back. Not bad at all. Two fans won the auction, paying $300,000, and all the money went to the Bob Woodroff Foundation, which helps injured servicemen and their families when they return home. So that's that's a good cause. Not a bad deal. You go have lasagna at uh, Bruce's house, get a guitar lesson, and then ride around the block. And his, I and would. Sidecar. I can only imagine sitting there eating that freaking lasagna and going, "I paid three hundred thousand dollars for this." <laughs> that better be some good damn lasagna. Freaking hell, man! <laughs> that better oh. be a good guitar lesson too. I hope he was there. I wonder yeah, if he really? made. I wonder I, if he no. made it. I wonder if they pulled it out. It was like a frozen lasagna. It's a frozen. It's a little of Stouffer's really? lean cuisine or something. Do you have like any? That. Do you have any chili peppers? No. <laughs> yeah, Bruce isn't home either. No but, garlic uh, bread. Actually, yeah, if just... a shout out to Bruce. His new album is really good. I like it. Yeah, I haven't yeah, heard any it's of it. Good. There's a Netflix uh, special about the album. It's recorded in a studio. Very like good little art. very well no no the vi- no the the video the Netflix special. Oh is, I see what you're saying. Is, okay. Uh, <laughs> the record. But they're all in the studio. So he brings his okay. whole band back and they talk about it and very cool. And for those that don't know, Clemen Clemen Clemens' son plays in his band. So 
Some people Clarence, might not know. Clarence Clemens? Is that you talking about? What did I say? Clemens Clarence? Clement, Clemens. I don't know what you said. <laughs> you said I think you the, said Clemens. The guy Clemens. who played the saxophone for Bruce Springsteen who passed Clarence, away, his son, Clarence, Clarence Clemens. Clemens. <laughs> you got, if you that if your guy. last name's Clemens, stay away from Clemens. if you stay away from Clarence. Yeah. Steve Clemens. <laughs> Steve Clemens, please. That'd be yeah, better for us. Especially there for us. Go. Okay. All right. Uh let's go back to nineteen seventy one. On November eighth, this was released. You see it? You see it? You see that? There's no name on it. We don't know what it is. No, I know, right? It's just a a weird album. It's an album by Led Zeppelin, their fourth album. The album has no printed title. It's generally referred to as Four Symbols, the fourth album, or simply Led Zeppelin Four. I guess it's your choice. I call it Led Zeppelin's fourth album. It contains Stairway to Heaven, as everybody knows. Uh, the album went on to sell over 37 million copies worldwide. The 19th century rustic oil painting on the front of the album was actually purchased by Robert Plant from an antique shop in Reading, Berkshire, England. If we can get a shot of it here. I don't know. So I wonder what that painting is worth now. Probably a hell of a lot of money. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I don't know. It's, I'd say 300 grand in a lasagna. <laughs> and the shirt off his back. You could go to Robert's house and have lasagna. Well, yeah, I'll make some calls. 1958, November 9th. Elvis Presley's Hound Dog exceeded 3 million copies sold in the U.S., becoming only the third single to do so ever. The other two were White Christmas by Bing Crosby and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer by Gene Audrey. Exciting. And this next one, I just came across this. In 1985, on June 9th, Jan Hammer was at number one on the singles chart with the Miami Vice theme. Wow, that's right up. That that was TV Guide material. This is TV. This is perfect for tonight. And I went, I was digging through the old pile of 45s I have. And oh, I thought you were going to say TV Guides. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not uh, Frank Costanza. I don't collect TV Guides. I, I actually have this 45. I, I still have it. But I was so upset when I found out. I don't know if we can see this here. It's busted. It's oh, cracked right God. in half. So I can't play it anymore. I don't know how that happened. No idea. That's a bummer. And while I was rummaging through all the stack of 45s I had, I came across another one. Who remembers this one? Yeah, Shaka Khan. Believe it or not, I actually have this for you. I did not know I had this. Now, what's... Shaka Khan's I Feel For You. Now, didn't Prince write that? Yes, exactly. Prince did write and that. And Stevie Wonder played the harp. Steve, yep, I have that right here. Prince, uh, Stevie Wonder played oh, the harp. Oh, did harmonica. I steal all your stuff? Yeah. Damn. And the rap, the rap at the, was done by Grandmaster Melly Mel, who I, I can't say I remember. Melly Mel? Melly Mel. But, uh, and the repetition of Was Khan's he friends with Clarence Clemens? Song, was Melly, yeah, was Melly Mel friends yeah. with Clement Clemens? Melly Mel and Clemens Clemens. Uh, the rap at the beginning was actually a mistake made by the producer, and they ended up liking it so much they decided to keep it. I don't know. Sounds good to me. It's amazing what you can find when you look through the old, old pile of records. Who knew? No idea I had that. And that's it for this week in music. So That's Shaka good. Khan. Yeah, I feel for you. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here we go. This can lead into our TV discussion. This is Miami Vice. Remember, I I remember Sorry, Don Johnson. I remember going to the clubs and stuff, and you had to dress like those guys. You had to Michael dress. Thomas. That was the dancing. Uh, the dance. You had that. That shirt with the jacket on top. Yeah, and you had to roll up the sleeves, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And so, this song was everywhere. So TV Guide. So TV Guide. If Do you know yeah. how old TV Guide is? So I was doing some research on the TV Guide, and they launched, let me, let, they launched let me guess, it. Let me guess. Let me guess. 1948. Yeah. No. Well, that's when they... No, 
You looked it up too, didn't you? I did. I did a quick Google search. But that's when they started it. But mm -hmm. it launched on. It launched. Uh, hold on, that's not right. What did I just click? I had it here. Okay, so it 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 was founded in 1948, but the first issue was 1953. Ah, uh, okay. And what, I imagine there wasn't a whole lot on TV. In but 94. in 1996, they launched TV Guide Digital. 96, okay. The digital uh, version. Okay. So okay. you could uh, get it. Um, then, and I was, uh, I was wondering, you know, one of my, well, I'm trying to think now some of the, they used to have a crossword puzzle in there too, remember? Oh yeah. Uh, they used really, to have the crossword yep. puzzle. So you get that. Yep. It was all TV shows and mm -hmm. man, all celebrities and whatnot. that was yep. like the, I think that used to get, that used to come now they had different TV guides too. Cause you would get them in the paper. Mm -hmm. So the yeah, Star Week magazine. Yeah. So sun, Saturday's <laughs> newspaper yep. gave you the guide. And, and I think that that's when the TV guide came out around the same time. So the whole idea was, the only way you knew the guests or what games were going to be on TV or whatever was happening on TV, mm -hmm. the only way you were going to find out was by getting that book. You got to get that and magazine. And then yep. you get it, and then you get, like, a little blurb of, like... A uh, little synopsis of what's going to happen. Yeah, on like one little, one little yep. five minutes or something like yep. that. Yep. Yeah, so happy days. Laverne and yep. Shirley. And uh, now, do you remember, I was, I remember this, well, I didn't have to think hard for this because I remember the first, your first memory of watching TV. Oh boy. Um, I would have to say my first memory of watching TV was the show Emergency. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know yeah. If you, if you yeah, remember I know, I know Emergency, yeah. Um, it, it started in the very early seventies. I think it was 1972. They were firefighters and they yes. were first responders really. Um, they, yeah. Station fifty nine. Nine. Oh. Uh, station 51. I got to look oh, it up. Oh yeah. Now. Well, I'm getting, Oh, Adam 12 was the police car one. Emergency. Yeah. It was. Oh, okay. From 1972 to 1979. So it started before I was even born. But I do remember, you know, lying on the carpet with my little fire trucks <laughs> <laughs> and, and a, and a pack on. of matches. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> and watching uh, Gage uh, and DeSoto were the guys. Gage. <laughs> These guys. And uh, yeah, I, I loved it. That's, you know, I just remember watching it all the time. Well, mine is the first thing I remember that I ever watched on TV. And the reason it being was such a big thing was the landing on the moon. Oh, of course. Yeah. And uh, that I would have been maybe five. And uh, I remember that my vivid vision of it is I'm standing. We had a couch in our living room that faced the TV and you could stand behind the couch. And I remember being behind it and whether I had a teddy bear or something in my hand, I was playing with something. And my mom kept saying, Mark, watch, watch, you got to watch this. And I, I kept looking over the couch to see what it was. And then they made such, I think because my parents made such a big deal out of this that mm -hmm. day, that's why it stuck in my head. But that's it. I remember the black and white TV and mm -hmm. that's pretty much it. That was well, my, that, that, that's a pretty amazing memory to have. Yeah, like, but it, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, I, it's not like I, you know, watched it and could tell you everything that happened. I just, right. Yeah. 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 I just remember two guys in blue uniforms running around with a fire hose <laughs> you know, and yelling. And I, I don't remember much it, it, about it. And it was show, as but... fake as my moon landing. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I think it, I'm trying to think of the house we lived in. I think it was Bowie Road at the time. But yeah. But yeah, good memories. Yeah. But I, I mean... I remember having a black, so I had a black and white TV in my basement. So when I was a teenager, though, mm -hmm. notice when I was a teenager, I ended up getting a TV given to me, and it was a black and white TV, which we did have color TVs back then, but I ended up having this big black and white, and I yeah. used to watch the Johnny Carson show. 
Oh, yeah. I loved Carson. And then I yep. got into watching some Monday Night Football because it was great to stay up late, watch TV. And I used to watch it on this black and white TV. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's what, uh, yeah. I grew up with a old black and white TV as well. And yeah, uh, didn't have a remote or anything. You had to get up, change the dial. You know, if you had to turn it up, you'd turn up the little volume thing. And when I was a kid, we had to walk to the TV. Had to walk all the way to the <laughs> Two TV miles and then walk the all the way back and sit down. And then when you get back, you realize, yeah, the, then you got to move the bunny ears. And, uh, <laughs> I'm yeah, trying well, to think what we, we must have had a tower. We always had cable. I don't know. I, yeah. My mother was a TV watcher. Like, like she watched, you know, everything. Yeah, Obviously, she I don't watched know when ca- I don't know when cable came in. I'm not sure. I'm not I sure. just remember it kind of always being there. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure when cable came because... Uh, yeah, I think we had the. You only had like a few cha- options, right? And then yeah, I mean, you had the three major networks, and then you had uh, a couple of local channels. But it, uh, it was amazing. You think back now, it's the only way you knew who was really. You knew who was like teams. You knew who was playing because you could. Well, right. again, you you would have to. You couldn't get. How would you get a schedule to the hockey game? I think it was used, printed in the in the newspaper. Right, so the news, but and then they used to ch- say what games. I think every day in the newspaper you could get the daily um, TV listings. Right. So you yes. got the TV guide was the whole week. The whole week. But and then the if newspaper you, would give exactly. you exactly. So if you got the a, newspaper in the rundown. morning, you get a rundown of what's on tonight. Yeah, I, I remember when when the Leaf schedule, the, the 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 season schedule was made up. They would print it in whatever edition of the newspaper, and it would be like a, a full page. And mm. uh, I would get it. It would come out in late September, early October, and cut I would out. cut it out <laughs> and stick it up on my wall. So I had the whole Leaf schedule, so I knew when every game was. But back then, um, not every game was televised either. They would have obviously hockey night in Canada, right? On Saturday nights, right. and then they would have the odd game on a Wednesday or a Monday. Well, you could watch the Montreal Canadiens on the French Channel. Yeah, but who the hell wanted to do that? Me. Right? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, well, I want to watch a good hockey game. Where you yeah, going? Well, <laughs> but yeah, the Leafs in the seventies. Well, they were very entertaining in the seventies. Eddie Shack and. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, all those. Well, well, they were entertaining in the 80s, too, in their own unique way. Tiger Williams, <laughs> Tiger Williams. The fans were pretty entertaining. Yeah, Tiger Williams and all those guys. And I used to go to a lot of Leaf games. I, I was mm. very lucky. I got to, my dad used to take me to a lot of Leaf games. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, so the TV Guide, uh, I'm trying to think some, now, favorite shows. So we got, no. we got, a, we got about 10 years between us, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, roughly, so yeah. so we probably cross over here a bit, but. I'm tr- trying, and I lived in England for a while. So my first shows in England were um, we did watch a little. I watched a little bit of TV in England, mm-hmm. but here I'm trying to think my first show. So, do you remember the show Family? Fa- it's just called Family. Family. No, I don't. remember So that was that. before you. That was Christy McNichol. Okay. So she. That was a good. That was a good show that came on. Um. But they, so they had different, they had like ser- weekly series shows, right? They mm-hmm. were, yeah, of course. Like, yeah. um, well, well, I just hit, I hit something on my screen. I think we're all here. There we are. Yeah. Now we're here. We're uh, all we didn't go anywhere. It's just, I went somewhere <laughs> in my, in my brain. So, so what were you watching? What were your early, sh- I mean, we talked about. Well, okay. Growing up in the. Other than well, emergency. Through, I remember the '70s shows. You had um, like the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, with, the Incredible uh, Hulk. Uh, Jesus, what's his name? Lou Ferrigno um, or Bill Lou Bi- Ferrigno. Bill Bixby. Bill Bixby. Yeah, yeah. With the, all that green makeup, you know, that was a very popular show. And you had uh, like Chips. Remember Chips? Yeah, Chips. Um, Chips was good. Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch was awesome. Um, I'm trying to think what my dad liked. My dad liked uh, Beretta. Oh, Beretta, yeah. Beretta, yeah. that I think was... That's, that's um, going back a bit f- bit further. But now, didn't, I, I don't... didn't... That was uh, Robert Blake. Now, didn't Robert Blake get yep. charged with murdering his wife? Yeah, he did, I think, yeah. But he got off, didn't he? I can't remember, but yeah, like, uh, let's ask my friend Google again. Oh, here's one, Three's Company. Oh, 
Three's Company. How's the song go? Uh, who's not come and knock on our door? <laughs> yeah, three come and knock on our door. <laughs> three's Company. You. You remember it. With Three's that, Company. Will you put the song in the... there? Will you put the song in there? It sounds like a swinger show right off the bat. <laughs> if you didn't know, someone started telling you the lyrics for the song. Well, and then basically, I mean, the show was was. You know, everybody well, the, thought that's what was happening. Because the only the, right? well, they 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 had to make out. So this is interesting. They had to play out that he was gay. Yes. In order to stay there, because uh, Roper wouldn't let him live there because he didn't want no hanky panky going on. So <laughs> he, right. they, he said he was gay. So anytime they brought guys and girls, yeah. But he, the stuff that they got away with back then, yeah, like holy, they would. There's no way they could get away with that. So today. what? What's interesting about a lot of so living in England for a few years earlier, and being in touch with England, and we actually moved back for a very short time and then came back. But a lot of the shows in America are spinoffs of British shows. Three's Company is a spinoff. Yeah, I think it was yeah. the Live Birds actually. I. It was. It's a spinoff of a show called Man About the House. Man About the House. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Live at Birds, I think, was... I don't know if it was Laverne and Shirley. It was about two mm. girls that lived together in a flat, but there was a lot of shows. Um, was Laverne and Shirley a... Sp- um, well, no, it came sorry, from I'm, Happy I'm, Days. Happy. It was a spinoff. Right, from, that's, yes, it was... That's uh, I, I don't know yeah. if they... I guess it's a spinoff where they take, because, like, Joni loves Chachi. Right. <laughs> so just yeah. But yeah. did Chachi? Right, right. Yeah. Oh, I know what I. Oh, I see but, what yeah. happened here. I, I I can't remember if Laverne and Shirley was a was that a spinoff a direct spinoff from? Because um, Happy Days had so many characters come and go on. It that was show. Laverne and, and Laverne was on it, there. Right. Yeah. So it, that was a spinoff. But they right? had uh, yeah. Arnold's. Arnold's. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Arnold's. Arnold's, yeah. Okay, and because yeah. uh, he ended up having the, uh, and then there was, um, wasn't there another show too with? Uh, Where did Mork and Mindy come from? Hmm. Did they come that, from Happy Days too? I think it might have. If didn't you know, he might have? I, I that was a good I, show. Mork and Mindy. Yeah. Well, Robin Williams, he yeah. was brilliant. I mean, Taxi, he was great. remember Taxi? Taxi, yeah, I remember Taxi. Taxi was yeah. really good. That, that yeah. was a funny show. There was, yeah. there. Uh, I mean, geez, I don't know. Maybe they don't have that anymore. No, the, the shows, they're, they're not the same. They're not like, you know, you don't have this. And now we sound I, like I, a I bunch of old limited, farts. To be honest. And it, you know what? This is that syndrome that you get. It, I don't know the syndrome, but. This is that thing you get in when you start saying this stuff. Oh, it's it's not like it used to be. That's mm-hmm. when I remember my parents saying stuff like that. Yeah, that just but I analyze more. it differently. <laughs> I well, knowing what they would say, and then I look at it. It's like music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. music, right? The, the, mm-hmm. Music has changed, and I think with TV now, like comedy, like a lot of those shows, you look back at them. But then again, you have The Simpsons. I guess The Simpsons is pretty, pretty strong. Mm. Yeah. But you didn't have like some of the shows they had were crazy funny. But I think it's hard now to work the comedy. Well, it's getting well, really hard now. You can't say shit. No, you can't. You can't. You can't uh, make fun. You, you, you can't, do yeah. that's slightly off color, and you're gonna, you, you know, you're gonna be <laughs> slightly off color. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you can't uh, even say the... that probably. <laughs> I'm no, but it's true. But the I'm, thing is, I'm you're thinking constantly... of a show. Uh, what's that? What the hell is it? All in the family. All in the family. Yeah. Archie Bunker. I mean, come on. You cannot yeah. do anything like that today, right? Like you can't. But. But what was but great it... about that show? What was really good about that show? I think it. it you can't say that that was a racist show, because he played the part. He played right. the part of a guy who was like racist, I guess, or yeah. but he really played a guy who didn't understand, exactly. and it was his kids that were explaining to him all the mm-hmm. time, and yep. he kind of at the end of every show he did figure it out, like he did come mm-hmm. to terms with it, and he yeah, became friends yeah. with them all. So to me, that's completely opposite. Like mm-hmm. 
that to me is advancement. That show created advancement. It put people in a situation that were on the edge of being racist and waking mm -hmm. them up. Like okay, it, it, but let, let's say that that show didn't exist then and all of a sudden that show came on now. Do you think people would read it that way? Or do you think, my God, this show is racist? This guy's a bigot. But this it doesn't ridiculous. fit today because we know we know the things that he said. It's, it's like, right, it's like right. oh, they, they, they think you were mocking it. But at the time... Yeah. Yeah. These were break breakthrough moments. We were they were trying to with that those shows were to me breaking down the barriers. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. See, here's an interesting thing too. Wade says the Jeffersons it, yes. was the spinoff. And there was yeah, lots the of that, yeah. right? George Jefferson yeah. was his dry cleaner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? And they yeah. played and it was so good how they played that off. Remember the guy who would come down and walk on his back upstairs, come and walk on <laughs> Jefferson's back when he put his back. No. Yeah, he would have him walk on his back. Yeah, no, whose uh, back would go out? I don't. Was remember. it the guy up? Yeah, uh, maybe. I, I maybe Wade remember. knows uh, that. He's all watching. I can think of right now is Wheezy. <laughs> really? <laughs> hey, Wheezy, come on, Wheezy. <laughs> yeah, if oh, he was a kid, he was Gary Coleman. If oh, that, God. yeah, but see, yeah. Uh, but I think those shows to me, like someone says, oh, that show was so racist. I think no, I think it's complete opposite. I think that show was showing you. The difference mm, yeah. in generations, and I think that's where a lot of people get get mixed up. That show yes. really advanced yeah. us. It made us. When you're watching that show, you're thinking to yourself, mm -hmm. the, like Reiner's got a point, or what mm -hmm. was it? What was the girl's name? Sally. Sally yeah, Struthers. Sally. But I don't oh yeah, what... Sally, and yeah, that wasn't her real name. Well, I no, uh, I can't remember what her name was on the show. But uh, uh, Rob Reiner was Meathead. I know that. Yeah, Meathead and. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to think yeah. of what's her Maureen McGovern was the mother. Uh, God, what, the what was, was her name? What was her name? Um, oh. Edith. 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 Yeah. Edith. Edith they and Archie. Were... Archie. Yeah, because it was the <laughs> uh, it was the Jeffersons' kids that would come over, right? Wasn't it the Jeffersons? Wasn't it the kid would come over and his father was the was uh, Mr. Jefferson, but you never saw Jefferson in all my family. I, can't right? I don't know. How, how I honestly works. can't remember. But um, oh, Ooh. Bentley, Bentley walked on George's back. Bentley, there we go. <laughs> Bentley walked on George's. There's a there's a white name for you. Wow. Wait, I, are you just remembering this, or are you looking this up? Because no, he's quite he's probably remembering wow. it. But yeah, Holy Bentley. Cow. Bentley. And then I there was Bentley. obviously there was some of the other ones where one day at a time. One day at a time. Yep. Yeah. Today, it With, sounds like uh, that'd be a bunch of people that are going to Alcoholics Anonymous. But actually, I think everyone in that show. Every, well, that, that's, I think, new. that's that show is on again. They've re redone that. But it's, that show, I think everyone did end up at freaking Alcoholics Anonymous, didn't they? Yeah, I don't know. What was the name? The one, the one woman. That, yeah, that was Julie, McKenzie right? Phillips, Julie. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah she and had of course, a Valerie Bertinelli. Now, didn't, wasn't there a spinoff? There were, the, wasn't the guy who was the superintendent, didn't, or the guy who looked Schneider. Like, Snyder didn't he have a show after that I don't remember I don't know if he did or not I think it's neat all the spinoffs and stuff that a happened. lot of spinoffs yeah a ton of spinoffs um one one of them um I was just thinking of one now I can't remember what it was uh what well were... all in the family had a it, I don't don't know if it was a spinoff, but I Archie Bunker's place afterwards. When oh, all the family right. Ended, ended yeah, and, I never watched it. Yeah, I didn't really watch that either. Um, but uh, but yeah. a, a lot of these shows tried to continue on with characters and take it in different directions, which usually failed miserably. <laughs> well, well, Laverne and Shirley, we we're talking earlier. Happy Days, Laverne and Shirley was very successful. And, oh, uh, very. Yeah, it was. Yeah. That was a huge show, Laverne and Shirley. I, again, I think because of the characters. But the didn't characters, they? Didn't Lenny and Squiggy have a show too? Lenny and Squiggy, remember? Uh, what was yeah, the, I, what remember, was I the, know who you're talking about. Where, where did Laverne and Shirley work? Oh, at that uh, thing in Milwaukee. Milwaukee Brewery. <laughs> yeah. The brewery. That's right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What's it's amazing what you remember. Oh, what's happening? What's, what's happening? What was was that? What's happening? Was that uh um, that was JJ Walker? No. No, that, you're thinking of good times. Good times. Oh. Dino Maid. Dino yeah, <laughs> Dino Maid. He was like that guy was like a Dave Chappelle. He, yeah, yeah. He was he like was. a Dave Chappelle. I wonder if Dave Chappelle yeah. kind of really 
was studied that guy a little bit because I you see a lot of it. Yeah. But yeah. we were talking about Mork and Mindy. Yeah, Mork and Mindy was a good one. Mork and Mindy was good. Oh, yeah, the Cosby Show. Oh. <laughs> the Cosby Show. Frickin' Can't hell. We all Cosby love show. fucking Bill Cosby. That little <laughs> creep. That Everyone loved him. Oh, my oh, yeah. goodness. Oh, yeah. And it that, turns that out. That was huge. That turns was out he was a nutcase. Yep. <laughs> yeah. The best thing about the Cosby Show was uh, Peter. Remember Peter, the kid who lived across the street, never spoke a word. He would just come over, get in trouble, and then run home. No. Remember this kid, this little fat kid? <laughs> I don't know who he was, but he just it was he was on once in a while. He he pulled the will over everybody's eyes, Cosby. Like oh, yeah. he, he was like that was the American family. That was the that was like the T V family. Yeah. Like that yeah, was absolutely. the family that everyone was trying to uh strive to be. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. That oh. that was what, what Leave It to Beaver was in the fifties and sixties, you know. And yeah. Was. But but the interesting thing about Leave It to Beaver, and I read this um several years ago. The the creator um wrote this show and the show is meant to be seen through uh, beaver's eyes you know it's seen through him his the, the experiences in life and that's why everything is always so perfect and everybody always made fun of this show because you have mrs cleaver who's you know this the mom who's wearing the pearls and the big dress while she's vacuuming and the dad who always comes to the proper conclusions and everything but this was how beaver saw everything and how everything worked out and if you go back and watch this show knowing that it it kind of takes on a whole new meaning yeah, you know, it doesn't it look was like a this good show. Ri- ri- ridiculously, didn't, you know, didn't Eddie Haskell? And, Eddie, oh, Eddie Haskell, Haskell. He passed. <laughs> Eddie away, Haskell he, was brilliant. He passed away not too long ago, I think. I think. Did he really? Uh, I hate, don't, I don't I, remember. Oh man, I hate pushing people to their death too soon. I hope. <laughs> let's hope he's not. But yeah, I think no, he Eddie did. Haskell was great. But again, he was how you know that that kid that that older friend of wally or whatever that how the beaver saw him you know obnoxious. yeah <laughs> they were yeah so and then there was one of my little rascals little Here, rascals little another rascals. classic yeah yep. but they had the little little color kid named buckwheat <laughs> <laughs> yep who eddie murphy went on to do yeah <laughs> do on saturday night live, yeah. live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They made a few movies, I think, after, too. They did a few movies later on. Yeah, I don't think they did very good, but... Uh, yeah, but some uh, great... There were some great shows, man. There were some good ones. Oi, one of my... You know, it's... Now, crushes. Crushes on girls on TV. Oh, boy. Here Maybe, we go. <laughs> like, in the 70s, so... Farrah, Charlie's Angels. Fair, Yeah, Fair Fawcett, who I had... Fair Fawcett was a big one, if... We had like a Farrah Fawcett po- poster. All the guys had a Farrah Fawcett poster <laughs> in their bedroom. And Cheryl Teagues. Cheryl Teagues Cheryl was Teagues, another one. Yeah. She was very popular. I know if Tim were here, he would say, um, oh, for God's sake, what's her name? Wonder Woman. Uh, oh, frick. Oh, my God. I'm drawing a blank. I know. It, it's on the tip it's of my tongue. It's not Anderson, is it? Is it uh, Lin- Linda? Yeah, it, Linda Carter. Linda Carter. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. And um, yeah, wonder and the Bionic Man, and then Lindsay Wagner oh. was the Bionic <laughs> the Woman. Bionic woman. <laughs> what was the guy's name? Who uh, who was the guy who was responsible for putting uh, Steve Austin together? Who is the guy? <laughs> who is the, Steve Austin? Was the six million dollar man? Steve Austin. Six astronaut. million dollars would get you shit this this time oh, yeah. around. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, who was the guy that uh, who was the guy who was in charge of him? Because he had that crash, remember? And then the guy put him together. Yep. He yep. was his. Uh, uh, we can make him better, faster, yeah, we stronger. Can make... <laughs> he had like a <laughs> one name. I remember watching that all the time. Yeah, I I think when I was a kid, I had that little that the the, the six million dollar doll thing. <laughs> Here, here's here's a good one. Knight Rider. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, the Hoff, of course. You can't beat the Hoff. Oswald. Get... Oswald. That was the guy. Oswald. <laughs> All right. It, it really helped. Who needs Google when you got great people watching the show? Oswald. Oswald. Wow. 
And, <laughs> but then there was, so there was a six million, then there's the bionic woman. She had her bionic own show. Yeah. And uh, then they were, they also had a bionic dog. Remember they got him a freaking dog? No, I don't remember they that. They did. He had a bionic dog. <laughs> I'm sure he had a German shepherd. Oh, the dog God. came out. Yeah, bionic dog. But it bionic wasn't, a, it dog. was in the show. I don't think it was like the bionic dog show. Right. But he, yeah, I'm but sure they just, had it. They had to have a dog. Little... They had to have a bionic dog. Well, the littlest hobo. <laughs> oh, Oscar. <laughs> oh, not Oswald. <laughs> you're getting mixed up. You're getting, Wade, Wade says it was Oscar. Oscar. Wade, Wade, you're right. You're, get, you're, getting, right. you're, you're yeah. getting your conspiracy theories mixed up with the $6 million man. <laughs> so now we got to find out. Uh... Oh, boy. Well, remember the term, remember uh, the term uh, jump, jump the shark? which originated from that Happy Days episode where Fonzie actually jumped over that shark oh, while yes. he was water skiing in his leather jacket. And and every TV show comes to a point where they, quote, unquote, jump the shark. And the show is, gets to the point where it's just kind of ridiculous. Okay, so. What do we got? <clears throat> Maximilian. Maximilian, often simply called Max, is a bionic German shepherd dog. He is a <laughs> recurring character for the third and final 1978 season of The Bionic Woman. Oh, on The Bionic Woman. Okay. That's one dog you don't let hump your leg. I'm telling you, I ripped the thing right <laughs> that off. That is one bionic <laughs> yeah. hump. Oh, my God. Jesus wow. Christ. <laughs> okay, so that's when that show obviously jumped the shark. Yeah. Jeez. That's, so that's yeah, funny. remember remember when Fonzie jumped the shark? It was a big oh. pool. He's he's water. Was it water skiing? Is that what he was doing? And he had to jump over this big tank with a shark in it or something. Yes. He's yeah. He's wearing the leather jacket <laughs> while he's water skiing. For the love of God, and his hair is still all perfect and all. I just oh, come on. <laughs> oh, Henry Winkler. I really liked him though as an actor. Oh yeah, of course. but some of his movies, he had some good movies. Night shift, sure. night shift. Sure. Oh, night shift. That's, that's a classic. Night shift, movie. What else? Yeah. And he was so different in those movies than like Fonzie was like. Well, to, yeah, but he wasn't Fonzie really. Is, yeah, is the character, right? Like, but he wasn't good... that. He wasn't really tough. Yeah, he always had a sensitive side to him, which is great. That was the great TV back then. Yeah. That's what yeah. I liked about it. Again, it was you know he always come around to understand and mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, geez, yeah, jumping the um, but that the that shark. brings me back to the evil Knievel days. Oh God, yeah, good old so, evil Knievel. So yeah, Knight Rider, Knight Rider. Oh, yeah. oh so, the A Team. So now we're into the oh, 80s. Oh, the A Team. That A Team was 80s. Yes, yeah, so we moved to the 80s. With Mr. T and uh, by Animal. one one o'clock, we should be in the 90s. <laughs> Well, but, the 80s, they had a lot of sitcom, a lot of sitcom. Like, I guess, well, a lot of them from the set, like Three's Company came, went into the 80s for sure. Yeah. Like, that went on forever, that show. But didn't uh, that, didn't something else come of Three's Company? They had a spinoff called The Ropers. Oh, The and, Ropers. And Three's a Crowd after. Uh, Three's a Crowd. Three's Company ended, I think, and Jack got married. And I think they tried to continue him and his mm. wife with Three's a Crowd. Night, Night Court. Court. How can yeah. I forget Night Court? Night Court. <laughs> I didn't watch a lot of Night Court. I wasn't. Uh... Love Night Court. Uh, the the wackiest, craziest, funniest show. It was just, you never knew what the hell was going to happen. Dukes of Hazard, another class. Wasn't there some talk about that coming, not being able to play anymore or something? Because of the car has the Confederate flag on the, on the, on the Oh, roof. yeah. Right? Yep. See, Mm -hmm. Oh, where do you draw the line? Just a good old boy. <laughs> Look at all those. Like, there must be some albums out there, like Skinner albums with the Confederate flag. I'm sure there are somewhere. Yeah, and I yeah. think a lot of those, I think this is the problem I have with a lot of this taking away this stuff <clears throat> because um, there, the intention, like if you put out an album, like Leonard Skinner put out an album, uh, really they, they, they grew up with the flag and a lot of people didn't understand mm. the meaning behind it. They just, mm. they kind of adopted the idea of the flag as a symbol and, but they yeah. didn't really apply it to anything. Yeah. And I think that's where now it's to go back and take that out. But, Oh, here's a good one. 
Oh, you care. <laughs> Less There's messman. so many, man. There were so many shows back then. The uh, if you, it, I don't know if you guys know this, but Les Nessman on WKRP in every single episode, he has a Band-Aid on somewhere. Oh, yeah? He, he was clumsy. He hurt himself. The story behind that, I don't know how I know this or why I, know, why I remember this, but the very first show, right before they did the taping, he had cut himself on his hand or something like that, so they threw a Band-Aid on it. And somebody thought that wouldn't it be funny if, because of the character that he was, you know, this clumsy kind of goofy guy, that if every show he had a Band-Aid on him somewhere else because he's always, you know, hurting himself and doing these things. So apparently that's a... So now I have to go back and look for a Band-Aid. You got to go back it's and watch like, every episode. It's like looking for a Superman in a Seinfeld episode. Right. That's right. You know? Like, There's Superman somewhere. In, yeah, in, I know. Yeah. I, I, I started watching it and started looking for the stupid thing. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. I mean, Seinfeld. Yeah. So what was the... And then there was MASH. MASH. We oh, missed MASH. We missed yeah. MASH. MASH. Um, yeah, there was... Cheers. Cheers was another Cheers one. Cheers came was out. Huge. Yeah, yeah, Cheers is... Now, I went back and watched all the Cheers. Mm-hmm. I think I watched them all. I watched all the Seinfelds. Yeah. Um. And it, you know what? I, did you did you come across any shows? Because this is common with me, where I watch a first couple of them and I didn't get into them and I never watched them. Then all of a sudden, I watch one again and then it hits me, and then I fall in love with it and I go back and watch them all. Cheers was that for me. I, cheers for sure. Yeah. Cheers. I, cheers. I never got into it at first, and then I, I got didn't, hooked. I didn't on either. It. Um, actually, Seinfeld, I never really got into. Yeah, I when, think when same it first for me ran too. Either. I started, I caught it in reruns. Very funny and I show. Kind of, you know, now, started watching it. Have you, have you ever <clears throat> watched that show with the writer from Seinfeld? That show he has. Oh, uh, Larry, is Larry David? Yeah. That what's that about? show he came out with? <sighs> what's that show he had? Uh, one oh of the God. big show uh, he had running. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I can't remember the name it's, of it's it. It's kind of, like, yeah. it's a, anyways. That show, I don't. Have you seen the Netflix uh, story about the guy who was uh, charged with murdering somebody, and that show ended up getting him off? I've heard about it, but I haven't. It's amazing. So what happened okay. was the guy uh, he 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 got charged with killing or murdering someone and something, and he said, "No, I was at the baseball game." Right. And they said, prove it. And he couldn't prove it. So they started looking about, well, what if we look, you know, maybe someone there remembers you. So it turns out that they were filming that show that day in the stands. Right, right. And he is seen in the footage. They had all the footage of the tape. They went through the footage and Mm. they found this guy in the footage. That's crazy. Of the day they filmed, and it was what they used to get him off. Wow. But if you go, it's on Netflix, a uh, documentary on how this uh, whole thing mm-hmm. played out. But wow. man, oh, man. <laughs> like wild. someone, they called, they said they were fil- the lawyer must have found out or someone found out that they were filming that show. Maybe someone's got some footage or maybe you're on the Jumbotron. Mm-hmm. Or... Yeah, yeah. But that's insane. That's crazy. But Cur- I- curb your enthusiasm. Is that the name of the show? Curb your enthusiasm. That's yeah, right. Yeah. But it's amazing how many shows we <clears throat> named and how many we've missed tonight. Oh, like yeah, how okay. many shows? Like we'd have to go through a list. I'm glad we just didn't have a list. It was fun to to think of them. Just think of but, yeah, old favorite shows. Yeah. Dukes of Hazard. So we did Starsky and Hutch. What else? What other cop shows? We'll finish off with a few good cop shows. Oh, then they then we got into the. Oh, uh, what was the, see some of these I didn't get in. I was probably too busy. I didn't get into them. But um, uh, NYPD Blue or something. Oh, I never got into. I never got into that. Shows. I never got into like Law and Order. Yeah, any of those crime. Chicago know, Hope. Chicago, Chicago Hope. Hope. All that yeah. stuff, right? Then all that. But yeah. meanwhile, while all this was going on, they had soap operas running in the background around noontime in the afternoon. <laughs> they had tons and tons of soap operas that well, ran forever. Had- the, the nighttime soap operas were popular. Dynasty, Dallas, Dallas. yeah, that's right. That <laughs> was huge. We nearly missed all that. Knots Landing, all Dallas. Old, 
those yeah, were remember really who shot JR and they yeah. kept you hanging and frick it was bigger than the Super Bowl. Oh, totally. That was like major news. Who shot? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it was major. It was like yeah. everybody was glued to the TV set for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, um, and and this was back when, you know, not a lot of people had VCRs yet, right? Yeah. You had to, if you didn't watch it on whatever day at whatever time you missed it, you're screwed. And sometimes you, they had a repeat. You, sometimes yeah, they, they would do yeah. a repeat you, like the following a week or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, reruns, reruns. Oh, I gotta catch yeah. a rerun. But we, I remember. I don't know if we talked about V eight VCRs, Betamax. Well, the first movie. I remember the first. I can tell you. Maybe I don't know if I can do all three here, but I can tell you the first um, uh, VHSs we watched because when they came out with the movies, we didn't have a, a VCR. My mm -hmm. dad went and rented the V. You could rent a, v rent a VCR, VHS yep. or a v mm -hmm. VCR and yep. rent some movies and you get like a yep. bundle. You take the machine home, plug it in your yep. TV and put the movies in. We, uh, okay, so my dad came home with Ordinary Family. Uh, is it Ordinary Family? Ordinary, ordinary People? Ordinary People with Tim, uh, Tim Hutton. It was about okay. the kid. Yeah. The kid dies sailing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then his brother always felt guilty because he was in the boat and he had to let right. go of him. That one, which was a good start to my movie career on freaking VH, that was sad. Uh, <laughs> being there, being there was another one. I remember that being there with Peter Sellers. Right. Which, P okay. I th I'm not sure if I've and seen there's it, but one I other one that I can't think of that we got. Then uh, we had three movies, and uh, that's what we came home. I remember that my my dad getting. It. Then my dad went out and got a beta machine. We had uh, the, <laughs> we had a beta machine. I used to record stuff off of yeah. the oh, yeah. like music stuff and uh, music. oh totally yeah uh, yeah it Toronto was like, rocks yeah Toronto, yeah a TV show every yeah. day at uh, I think four o'clock or something Toronto rocks God and they had the, the Pepsi Power Hour on Wednesdays the twenty minute <laughs> twenty minute workout twenty minute workout <laughs> <laughs> yeah we yeah, used to record that yeah. <laughs> Man, good shows, good shows. Oh, good. And yeah. now, so what do you watch it? So now let's jump right to now. What have right you been? What are you watching on TV? What am I watching on actual TV? Or well, does Netflix count now? Well, yeah, it does because I don't have cable. So yeah, there's no so TV in my house. I, 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 on as far as like on TV, like a network, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, no, we're not watching anything. I'm watching. Well, Netflix. now like a lot of stuff kicks over, right? So now yeah. you can get HBO through right. your. Yeah. You don't have to have cable. I'm watching uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine with Joseph. Um, What's Brooklyn Kim's Nine Nine? Convenience. It's uh, Andy Andy Samberg um, about the uh, the Brooklyn police. They're detectives. It's a oh, it's a okay. you know, comedy, you know goofy funny thing you know so that's we, pretty much it i mean i don't we've watch had modern of, we've been going through a modern family because we family, never watched yeah. we never watched it so i think we're at season three season three yeah and Love i love modern family yeah I, i've been watching that there's some a good series if you like um you like the guy from star wars uh ewan mcgregor mm -hmm. he's okay He's in this show called, uh, well, they ride motorcycles, but uh, they do Long Way Around, Long Way Down, Long oh, Way Up. Oh, I've heard of that one. It's yeah. pretty good. I've enjoyed it. So it can. He, he's uh, a collector or something, isn't he? Of motorcycles or. I don't know if he's, a, he's an enthusiast. Something. I guess they do yeah. these rides with his friend. So they do mm. these rides. They've been pretty good. Yeah. And, Comedians um, in cars getting coffee. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. I, is that still going? I don't think it is. I, I don't, don't know. know. He did. Well, he's done it. He did a new show, didn't he, Seinfeld? And I heard there were some mixed reviews about it. Oh, I didn't know that. He did a stand-up. Oh, the stand-up thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't watched it. What's yeah. interesting, though, is I've switched over to a lot of watching podcasts and stuff. Like, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really... We had radio shows and stuff. But, like, today, the podcast, you it's like you can get tuned into what you want. Like, if there's something you want to know about today... Right, you can, you can a find it. Or so, a, let's say, for yeah, example, you find, yeah. you're looking at buying a Gibson guitar. Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, the brand you want, you're, you're thinking about it. You can go on YouTube after this and you can start searching the reviews, people telling you what they mm -hmm. like about it, what they don't like about it. Mm -hmm. And then you hear all the ins and outs. 
We mm-hmm. couldn't do that in 1970, 1980, 1999. So growing all. up, we never had the access to that. And I say this all the time. I think um, the thing that keeps me so excited about today's technology is the fact that I remember when we had none of it. Mm-hmm. Where kids, Completely. yeah, but if you're a kid now, so if you if you're a kid and you grew up with a, you knew what a cell phone was from. Day one. Day day one, yeah. Day one. Yeah. You knew what a cell phone was. So really, the only thing you've seen a cell phone, if you're 20, oh, my kids, mm-hmm. did we, when they were old enough to get a cell phone, cell phones had cameras. They were pretty right. good. They were, we you could get a, a decent cell phone. Mm-hmm. I think we had Blackberries and then we moved up, but there was, you could oh, do data, God. you could get all that stuff. So mm-hmm. they've never seen a real jump. I don't think in 24, years we've had better technology for the items mm-hmm. but what have we really brought out i think we've got drones have come up dr- drones you've got the, drones, apple, yeah. the apple the apple watch right uh the ipad is maybe oh, geez the ipad's what 12 years old maybe longer mm, probably probably longer i think the iphone's yeah. 2006 2005 the iPhone. Yeah, that's so. About right. yeah. If you're 15 years old, the mm-hmm. iPhone's been mm-hmm. around ever since. You have you just getting a better model, but all you're right. doing is getting something. Yeah. You're not really getting much more. You're just getting upgrade. Whereas mm-hmm. when we saw the first cell phone come out, mm-hmm. we were like, "What?" You know? Well, well like I, we were I saying, did, I, I never... had that first phone, that freaking big brick. <laughs> I I saw I had it. I we owned it. The first brick is <laughs> a two hander. God, you would have them. It had a handle on it, right? Yeah, and, and then you could mount, pie. and you could have them mounted in your car. Yep. And it yeah, cost a fortune. Absolutely. So if anyone you mm-hmm. wanted to call somebody, but you only wanted to talk to them for thirty seconds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I I never even had a computer until I was like twenty years old. This is that uh, even board even games. Board games are all played. Right, it's true. You're like on your on your game console, you you play like yeah. you know all the classic games like Monopoly and Game of Life They've, or because we used like. to play. I think uh, I remember computer games, and you mm-hmm. can. I remember being able to play Scrabble with somebody over the computer was freaking insane. <laughs> like I'm actually playing, and you could have a little chat in the corner. That was like, it was like putting a man on the moon. It was like amazing, <laughs> but really. We've we haven't come. The only thing that's outdone that is FaceTime, right? Because you can texting is no different than that. Yeah, you're still the, sending. The, the actual, stuff. It's just getting better graphics, speed. Right, right. But yeah. it's not like nothing new. Well, I mean, like the FaceTiming and the video chatting, and and if you think about what we're doing now, we are sitting here having a conversation that is going out to the entire world. When you yeah, think about, that, when I think about that, I'm like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Kind of crazy. Yeah, because we're know, just, like, wow. and you forget when you're sitting here talking, we forget that there's two people listening. <laughs> and one, <laughs> one of them, one of them is on the other side of the planet, right? <laughs> well, it's like every night, like every, every, every night I have a live video chat with somebody in mm-hmm. Uganda mm-hmm. every night. When you were a kid. You would have to write a letter, exactly, right? or on a typewriter, <laughs> if you, if you had a typewriter, yeah, and then you'd have to put a stamp on it and mail it off, and then yeah. wait. To we get could we back. could telephone though, but it would cost you, you could, a it fortune. It would cost you a fortune, though. and then you had to. I think you could, yeah, and even getting a line sometime was hard. Like getting yep. getting us getting the connection was tough. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they started coming out in the seventies and the eight. With seventies, I think when we came to Canada, they started having these like times when you could call overseas for like, yeah, a dollar, a discount, or, a discount or something like after that after ten o'clock or yeah, but certain hours and stuff. Pen like pals, that. Yeah. you would have pen pals. You could pen have pa- friends, yeah, pen right? Pal. Exactly, exactly. You'd write letters, and now yeah. it's now it's arranged marriages. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, mail mail order brides, not arranged marriages, not a, no. <laughs> oh brother yeah it's it's crazy what you can do now though but yeah but i i'm tr- i think that would be interesting talking about technology is another thing altogether but i try mm-hmm. to think i try to think of how many things that are really breakthrough today mm-hmm. like 
we've seen. Like we saw, you know, albums to cassettes to eight track to CDs. Yeah, CDs. 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 No yeah. freaking CDs are going out. C- yeah, it's CDs just data. So what? Past, can, yeah. What really can come? I know people say, yeah, but there's something will come. What more is after data? I don't know. I, have no, I don't know. I I do remember the first time seeing a, a CD and they, they, that was like 1982, I think is when the CDs, CDs were first introduced. And I was, uh, what was I nine? God Christ, I was nine years old. And I think I was in Eaton's or, or Sears or something like that in the electronics department. And they had this CD player and a bunch of CDs and they had a guy who was like doing a demo of it. And I remember going like, what the hell is this? And he goes, well, it's, it's like a record. Yeah. But you know you don't have this the, the 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 skips and the scratches and this and I'm like well you do Why? well yeah you do you totally <laughs> we do. found out you did that was bullshit <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I just remember thinking wow look how small it is and and you know you have this an, an entire album and you don't have to turn it over and I'm just like that was the big crap, well the cassettes some yeah cassettes you could get them where they would play the other side some auto auto reverse cassette auto deck. reverse cassettes oh that that yeah. was a big thing too. But, but the problem with that was, is at the end, the end of side A, if side B was longer or vice versa or whatever be, it was, yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd have, have 10 minutes of silence. Yeah. <laughs> and I think the plan, I think over. the plan was always to have the longest side on the front. On the front. That, yeah, but that's that what you should happen. do if you're smart. Yeah. You got to plan it that way. Make the, mm-hmm. so- put the songs in, but, uh, yeah, yeah it's, um, but that's what I, that's what drives me nuts now about vinyl is halfway through the album, you got to freaking flip it. You, you got to get up and turn it over. <laughs> and you're just getting into it. I mean, we, I remember, you know, I used to lay in a bed and listen to music and it would have to decide, is it going to be A or B when I fall asleep? Which side are you going to, yeah. yeah, what yeah. Side am but I gonna then go? when you, when you, when you got a, a cassette, you could record, was it a 90 minute tape? Yes. You could usually fit both sides of yeah. an album on one you side. You could fit a whole album on for sure. Yeah. I think, yeah. yeah. So that no, was you like, could, oh, yeah, because you'd be 45 minutes on one side. Usually an album was about 45 minutes. Yeah, f- yeah, yeah. It yeah. was rare that an album ran longer than 45 minutes. So, And it was like, oh, gold. I could listen to the whole thing without having to get up and turn it over. So I guess we're just waiting for the, Brit- the, the chips to go in the brain from Elon Musk. That Once we get the chips and the artificial <laughs> intelligence. I mean, there's a lot of technology out there that they're working on. It's pretty amazing. But really, mm-hmm. we, I mean... I mean, stuff like airdrop is really cool where you can just send stuff yep. to somebody in the room, which is really, that's not, yeah. again, that's to me, that's not like, well, I can email it to you. So it's not like a big deal. Right. Yeah. It's just another way of doing it. But Exactly. Yeah. It's not a huge leap. But I anything, think, but... I think the stuff like having GPS in your car was a big thing. Oh, it's a huge thing. I can't, you know, imagine having to go back now where you have a piece of paper <laughs> sitting on the seat beside you or on the dashboard with a list of instructions. Well, you'd have a map book. You'd have uh, or a the, map book. Yeah. Yeah. You would and, have and, that and uh, you're, famous. You're, uh, looking at, you're looking at the map book and f- you come to the end of the page and now you have to turn the page or something to figure yeah, you out you have where to follow it up and it would tell you on that page that you had to go to this page. This, a, yeah. A, now, a 25 on the yeah, next jump, page. Yeah. Jump 40 pages ahead. And, then, and yeah. if it was a shitty city, it would be stuck at the back of the book and you have to flip to the end. <laughs> That's true. That's yeah, true. Don't and go the off the page. Now they just tell yeah. you, uh, you know, I call but, it the map lady as I'm driving. And along, now, and now you can still get even confused with the GPS. So I couldn't even go imagine going back to a map book. Oh, forget it. Yeah. No. Like <laughs> now you can, you can just tell, yeah, you can ask Siri. Yep. Yep. Yeah. In you 800 meters, thing. turn left. Yeah. Perfect. Well, I don't know how friggin' far 800 meters is, but. And then it plays in your car and then your car mm-hmm. cuts off and the song stops and then the song comes back <laughs> on. It's yep. freaking insane. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's the cars crazy. now. The cars, like even the cars, the way like the Tesla drives. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. But every car now is getting the new cars are coming out with the radar in them. So when you're driving on the highway, it slows down. It mm-hmm. beeps if you get too close to the line. Pretty I soon, mean, you're not going to have to do anything. You're going to just, you know, I want to go here in your car. I'll be like, yeah, sure, let's go. They're even it, working the on a motorcycle. They're movie, working yeah. on a motorcycle that drives by itself. A, a motorcycle. A motorcycle that drives by itself. It stabilizes itself and everything in right. turn, just like same technology as Tesla. Mm. Like it's just cameras looking at things. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's again, you going, but it's simple technology. They're just trying to imply it to something that could kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but you're in a car. 
Like it's like I, I have a drone and the drone is amazing. Like it, you can freaking that thing just takes off and you can just fly it places and it can follow a route or you can have mm-hmm. it do whatever. The, the thing about drones, people are using them or criminals are using drones now and they, they search out neighborhoods and, and see what, you know, what's big now is people are stealing plants, outdoor plants. I didn't know there was a black market for plants. <laughs> I'm like, not talking, like, you know, like, like weed plants or any, like I'm just talking any kind of outdoor, I don't know, exotic or whatever, but people fly their drones over people's yards find out where these things are and then in the middle of the night they go and they rip them off this is a I thing i guess you can see <laughs> what, what you can doing. see what's in someone's backyard right if they got some stuff parked there yeah totally yeah so oh my god it's, it's good and it's bad i guess i don't know yeah well they put strict laws on flying a drone trust me i went yes. and got a drone oh, yeah. license and it's tough i yeah yeah, yeah. all right yep. well we better go before it's like midnight yeah no kidding i got to go yeah, watch well. happy days Happy days is on. <laughs> yeah, I'm I got. Go I gotta go because the show's coming on at ten thirty. You gotta go. You don't want to miss it. Well, you'd have to be in. Well, lunchtime. We used to come home from school and watch the Flintstones. Flintstones. I watched Flintstone. David the Beaver and I watched the Flintstones at lunch. And then you go back to school. It was all just all planned out. Then you come home and then on Sunday nights you would watch the uh, Disney. Disney. Uh, yep. Sunday night Disney. Saturday morning. They also had a, usually had a movie on. There was a movie, but then they had. Um. The Wonderful World of Disney. But then in the midweek, they would have an after-school special. The after-school special, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, always... I remember one. Listen to this. I remember one with John Travolta, Boy in the Plastic Bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that it's one, like too. I do remember that. They knew COVID was coming. They knew it. <laughs> it now we're all original living in a bubble. Boy. Now we're all living in a bubble. John Travolta and that, that crew, they knew something we didn't know. And at the end, at the end he said, fuck it, I'm out of here. And he ran out. I'm out remember? of a damn bubble. Yeah, they never did a part two. They never showed him after that, so you never knew if he made it or not. Remember? I, remember I believe that he made movie it. was really weird. That was... That was wow, that's funny. <laughs> boy in a plastic bubble. What a way to end the show. Oh, oh that was about as fucked up as Pulp Fiction, that show. <laughs> talking about <Ed>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Willis, oh, we are out of here, guys. Thanks a lot. Oh. Uh, what you talking about, Willis? <laughs> All right. Tomorrow's Remembrance Day. Remember to yes. do your uh, one minute, but I Don't forget uh, to remember. I do it. I I always think of the uh, great soldiers being, especially being from England. Uh, I always think if it wasn't for these guys, man, yeah, I don't know. We wouldn't we wouldn't be here right now, probably. We'd be speaking another language. Yes, we would. So, okay, folks. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, so, <laughs> and, and uh, go, go our best wishes, TV. best wishes to Tim. It, maybe Tim's watching. Maybe maybe you know. Tim's watching on morphine. And he's laughing. He's really enjoying it. Show is extra God, funny you tonight. guys were great the other night. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. We're out of here, folks. Thanks a all lot. Right. See you next Peace week. Out.